Hi, it's Dr. Maria Lee. When it comes to discussing travel vaccinations, one important vaccine is rarely discussed, and that is the rabies vaccines. If you just reacted with disbelief, you're not alone, but hear me out. Humans can track rabies through the bite of an infected animal, such as dogs, monkeys, bats, raccoons, foxes, and skunks. If medical treatment is not given urgently and rabies becomes established, death is certain. Australia is rabies free. However, we have a virus called lysivirus in our bat population, which is almost identical to rabies. The treatment and vaccination for lysivirus is the same as for rabies. For unvaccinated people who are bitten or scratched, the treatment is the immediate administration of rabies immunoglobulin followed by four doses of rabies vaccine over the ensuing two weeks. This sounds simple enough, but the reality is the availability of rabies immunoglobulin in developing countries is very variable. When there is no access locally, people often have no choice but to cancel their trip immediately and fly straight home to receive treatment. The resultant delay increases the risk of getting rabies never mind the extreme anxiety that is often associated with such an event. For vaccinated people, the treatment is two doses of rabies vaccine over the ensuing three days, which is much more palatable and much easier to access than rabies immunoglobulin. Even if local access was limited and you needed to fly home for treatment, there is much less anxiety involved because there is the reassurance that the vaccines you've had previously are already giving you a certain level of protective immunity. Most people tell me that they don't need rabies vaccine because they don't plan to come into contact with any animals while they are traveling. Unfortunately, most bites and scratches are unprovoked. Children in particular are more susceptible to rabies because they're more curious around animals, they may not report in the bite, and also their small stature makes them more prone to bites around the head and neck area, which are much more risky for rabies. I must stress that rabies vaccination is not only for travelers, but is also important for people who are frequently in contact with animals and bats, such as zookeepers, veterinarians, and also laboratory staff who may be in contact with samples containing these viruses. In fact, I've personally treated an Australian patient who was scratched by a bat while in her own garden. Regardless of whether you've been vaccinated, follow these steps while you're traveling. Number one, avoid all animals, whether caged or wild. Number two, don't carry food around with you, which may attract the attention of animals. Number three, keep a close eye on your children at all times. Number four, if you are bitten or scratched, Immediately wash the wounds out with soap and water and apply a solution such as povidine ID, which will kill as much virus as possible. This will reduce the amount of virus left in your wound and potentially delay the spread of rabies. Number five, see a doctor as soon as possible for rabies vaccination and or rabies immunoglobulin. The amount that you'll need will depend on whether you've been vaccinated and the bite or scratch in question. And number six, don't forget tetanus. Any sort of dirty wound requires an assessment by your doctor as to whether you need tetanus shots. In addition to bites, other exposures that should be treated as rabies prone include the nibbling of uncovered skin by the animal, scratches or abrasions with or without bleeding, licks on broken areas of skin, and the animal's saliva coming into contact with any of your mucous membranes. The mucous membranes are the shiny surfaces that line the inside of our body. And in terms of where animals may be able to gain exposure, this includes our eyes, nasal cavities, inside of the mouth, the tongue, the genital area, and the anus. In summary, before you travel, speak to your doctor about rabies vaccination. Not everyone needs it, but in certain circumstances, it can be life-saving.